Hello, everybody. Well, here I am coming to you from my living room again. Um, I uh, just want to talk to you guys today about um, a few things um, in Job um, that I was studying today, and I'd like to share it with everybody. Um, it's some important things that I think I've touched base on before, um, but it couldn't be more clear to me sometimes when we go through things, how uh, not everybody's going to uh, be there for you. Not everybody's going to say the right things and not everybody's going to be uh, as comforting as you'd like them to be. Uh, especially if they visualize and can see the trouble in your life. Now, I know that I've gone through some things and I've asked for help with things and we have, I mean, it just seems like uh, sometimes the trouble is never ending. Um, it is a difficult thing to face when we face troubles in our lives. And, and I like to make this more personal because what better way um, than to not try to point the finger, although I know this is going to seem like it is pointing the finger in a sense, but um, it is a message nonetheless. And then that, that maybe someone that hears it um, the Lord convicts their hearts and look we're and I'm just as guilty as the next person sometimes about uh, certain things but I try not I try not to be a discouragement to people who are going through hard times because if there's anyone that knows uh, how important it is to need forgiveness and to need things like that and and to need support um, it's me um, I don't have any right to point fingers, especially uh, since I was a, I had a horrible life and, and stuff like that. Now, I've put all that behind me. Um, we deal with things from day to day now, um, but sometimes people can't help but feel um, certain ways about things when it comes to my life. Um, and this is, and, and, and what I'm about to talk about today uh, is some of the ways that I've felt. Now, I'm making this personal because it is personal. God has dealt with my heart um, and has told me that um, sometimes we go through things and it isn't necessarily because of anything we've done. Um that's caused these problems, but it's, it's just because we need to, uh, learn what it's like and to build our strength and our faith and our hope and our trust in him. And sometimes, uh, it's important for us, even through hard times to realize that the only place that we should put our trust is in God and not in man. And it couldn't be more clear in what I'm about to read. Now, I, I would love to be able to have time, because uh, I'm already long-winded most of the time. Uh, I wish I could read all of it to you. And it's in the book of Job. Now, I know most of you are familiar with, with Job and what happened with Job. Now, I, like I said, I'd like, love to read it all to you. The whole story is just pretty lengthy of what Job goes through. But I'm only gonna share some verses with you that I think that are important um, for the message that I have for you today. And what I, I want to read is the scripture, and then we'll have to say a prayer, and then um, I'll go on with what I have to say. Now, I want to go to Job um, chapter 16 and verses 1 through 4. And this is going to be um, what I'm going to be speaking about today. Um, and here we go. In verse 1 it says, Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. Miserable comforters are ye all. Shall vain words have an end? Or what emboldeneth, emboldeneth thee that thou answerest? I also could speak as ye do. If your soul were in my soul's steed, I could heap up words against you and shake mine head 
at you. Let's go to prayer. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you and I praise you for this wonderful day that you've given us, Lord. And I know that it's early yet, Lord, and I just want to thank you for your word. I just want to thank you for the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that you provide to us of those who ask it of you. And Lord, I just want to thank you for your word that you reveal to us. I thank you for trusting me with your word. And Lord, I thank you for the for the um, understanding that you provide through your word, um, Lord. And I just ask that people have an um, open mind and that people open their their souls and their hearts to your word, Lord, and, and be receptive of it, Lord, and not be offended by the things that I say. And if their hearts convict them, Lord, just to go to you in prayer and maybe ask themselves, have I been this way? And I'm not saying that is the way of all the people that are my friends and whatnot, Lord. And the best of my friends are my family at church, my brethren. You know, Lord, and I know that sometimes that we can't trust any of them. We can't trust any other people to be what we want them to be for us when we need them to be. Not that they mean to be any certain way, Lord, because, Lord, sometimes people think they're doing us good when in reality, they're not. But Lord, I just ask that, that no matter what, we learn something from this, Lord, and take away from it for what it is, Lord, and just something that you can teach us. And I thank you for helping teach me certain things that, that I need to know, Lord, and, and how it can comfort me and be a comfort to me, knowing that I need to put my trust in you more and not in man. As you showed me before in the past, Lord, that um, I felt like I had to impress upon people and, and be a certain way. And Lord, I've learned throughout time that we can't count on people and that we got to count on you. And Lord, I just uh, thank you for the revelation that you give me in your word and able to show me and help comfort me in knowing that I can trust in you and that I should trust in you. And Lord, I just ask that you be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now now that I've read that, it says, uh, in this passage, Job had a comeback because it seemed like, you know, um, it just seemed like every, no matter what he said, he couldn't say the right thing. And he had already been through uh, some tragedies. He had lost everything, everything. It seemed like at the same time, because one after the next, uh, one of his servants, who only the one, the only ones to survive, were no bringers of comfort to him. They were bears of bad news, and we all know how we feel about being brought good bad news. Um, and it was just. It seems like a lot of times in, in all of a lot of our lives is like it just seems like it just when bad news starts it just doesn't stop it, that just seems like it just keeps coming and coming and coming and in some of the uh, storms in our lives that we go through well well job was going through that you know and he just wasn't job he wasn't comforted by what his friends said you know and he tells them it would be just as easy to point the fingers at them uh, for the things they've done in their lives. He, he He's trying to let them know that, you know, look, I understand that I have issues, you know. Um, but he told them, he said, miserable comforters are ye all. You know, and, and he's like, what makes you so bold to try to point out all my problems because I'm in misery right now, because I'm at my worst right now. I've, things have gone really horrible for me and you're not doing anything to help. That's basically what Job was saying. What are you, what are you trying to say? You know, how dare you? You know, it's a, Job is disheartened at the fact that all his friends seem to be able to do you know, seem to be able to do in his time of trouble is try and find some fault with him. You know, that's what they were trying to do. 
and trying to make it seem as if his sin is the reason he has faced all this trouble. You know, if we go if we go down to uh, verses 20 and 21, it says, My friends scorn me, but mine eye poureth out tears unto God. Oh, that one might plead for a man with God as a man pleadeth for his neighbor. You know, he was crying. He, he was he was in tears, I'm very sure, because he had lost his children. You know, he had lost, and one day he had lost everything, everything, his cattle, his everything. He still had his wife. And he just couldn't understand why. He's pouring out his heart and all his friends, all he wanted his friends to do was, was comfort him. And they just couldn't do it. For some reason, they, they, they tried to find things that were there, you know. And, you know, I just, I, the thing is, I think he was, Job was starting to, to see some things. So, you know, and, and, and I think that he was trying to, to understand why his friends were, were being so um, judgmental of him. And he's, all he wanted was some comfort, and he just wasn't getting it. And he was angry at his friends, you know? And, and let's go down to, uh, let's go to chapter 17 of Job. And we're going to look at verses 5 and 9. It says, He that speaketh flattery to his friends, even the eyes of his children shall fail. And in verse 9 it says, The righteous also shall hold on his way, and he that hath clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. See, he says, so why is it important to try and impress anyone? We find out in here that it obviously didn't do him no good because he was a good person. And these people tried to argue the point that you were the one that once co tried to comfort us. You were the one that did all this. And, and now you're going through all of this. And, and now they're trying to point the finger at him because it may, they're making him seem like the bad person. And it didn't do him any good to be impressive. And not that God was trying to prove anything, because I don't believe it was Job was trying to impress anyone, but God was was uh, had given him a lot of good things in life. You know, the Lord's teaching him things right now. You know, it's better to be humble and have nothing to prove, and do the work of God than to try and impress others. If all we are ever trying to do is impress people. Nothing ever goes right. And that's true. You know, for for us, because our heart, never, nothing seems to go right for us because our hearts should, should be focused on serving God, um, not impressing others. You know, and, and that's, that's very important, you know, is that a lot of times our friends our family, and even our brethren in the weakest times of our lives. Instead of comfort, uh, they throw stones and words without hope and encouragement. Even doing uh, so in the name of God. Or in saying it is for our own good. I don't think it's right. And, and I'm going to give you an example. You know, it seems like, you know, and it's like we've asked for help a lot of times. And maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should just, you know, say, okay, Lord, you know, we need to trust in you. Right? But as soon as we ask for prayer and maybe some help, and yes, we do this. We've done this, I don't know, it seems like a lot of times. And maybe people are getting frustrated because we ask for help for so much. But a lot of times people provide information that does us no good. And sometimes people will say things without thinking. You know, is this going to be comforting to my brother? You know, you know, or we can, they compare our lives with someone else's. You know, maybe our troubles aren't as bad as someone else's. What kind of comfort does that bring us? 
It doesn't. It doesn't offer us anything. You're better off just not saying anything at all. But the problem is, is people always seem to say things that are that do no good. They try to do things that do no good. And out of their mouths just come this discomfort. And, and they're like pins that poke at us, you know, and, and, and give us more pain than offers us any sort of comfort. And, and that's what, what um, happened um, here in Job's case, is that he had lost everything. Now, I'm not saying that our troubles are even close to that. Um, and I, I can tell you, we've experienced some uh, some losses in our life. Sorry, I said that. Life. <laughs> we've experienced some losses in our life here in this family. And I'm going to tell you, this family, because of me, has even lost uh, communication with some of their family and some of their friends. Um, but because they chose to do good for me and also to lean on God, which is something has happened through the years. None of us were perfect. We did things that we shouldn't have done or we th did things out of um, blindness. We know sometimes we didn't understand the word or sometimes we perceive things that we shouldn't have perceived them as. And we learn through time and God showed us the our wrong uh, beliefs. God helped show us through the years the things that we needed to get rid of in our lives that were hindering us. And, uh, and that involved a lot of things. That the, the music that we listened to um, the, the, the shows that we watch, the things, even drinking, um, not in excess, but socially and, and making excuses for it be, because of what the Bible says. But then when you understand what those things mean in the Bible compared to who, what they are today, you realize that you're not living right and, and you're not presenting your bodies wholly acceptable. But let's not get off the subject here. The thing is, is we learn things as we go, and we're not perfect. We, we're we not perfect people. We do sin. We do mess up all the time, and that's why we go to the Lord with a repentant heart and ask for forgiveness. Um, and we show God through our walk daily um, that repentance that we, do, that we have provided to God. Repentance is an action and not so much a word. You know, but anyway, this wasn't the comfort that that Job needed. He already knew that he was an imperfect person, and he knew that that. Uh, but and he already felt like kind of let down even by God. But God, he he really God gave giveth and God taketh away. You know, um, but the, the the test wasn't wasn't there was that so much. This was a time in his life where God had allowed. Uh, Satan to take things from him. And it was as he was trying to prove something to even the devil. See, the, the we, see we hear in the word of God that our battle is not against, uh, we war not against the flesh, right? But our, 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 our battle is against uh, spiritual things. And this is proof of that. That God asked the devil, have you considered my servant Job. Have you considered him? But God says, I'm not going to lay a hand on him, but I'll, I'll allow you to do this, but you can't take his life. Right? And so the, these are the things that happened to him. Even to his personal self, he had sores all over him and everything. Imagine that. And then your friends come in and say, how horrible of a person you must have been. <laughs> you know, you used to be this big big comforter and big support for all these people. And now God has struck you. And, and they said all these horrible things and you should probably do this and you should probably do that. And that's what's happened in our lives. Every time that we've asked for help, every time that things have happened that are so horrible or tragic in our lives, people just seem to think, well, he must have done something bad. And it's usually the fingers point at me and not my family. Um, because it's easier to see the bad because the man is in, is responsible for the family. So it's, it's, it has to be the man's fault. But also I have a past. So, of course, 
um, whether people try to or not, and whether they'll say they are or not, is 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 um, not relevant because it's already in their mind. So anyway, let's go to nineteen. You know, like I said, I wanted to say this: it's a lot of times our Christian brothers, you know, will use the name of God. You know invoking that as if they were saying some sort of good thing to us, you know? And I don't like that when people use that. Well, you should do this and you should do that. You're not comforting and you're not helping. And I know that we're asking for help. Well, 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 usually I ask for prayer first. And if you'd like to help, here's the number to help us, right? But what do I get instead? You know, and and all and, and everybody knows what our family's gone through and the things that we've been seen. And if you don't haven't ex haven't seen that with us, um, we've experienced a lot in our lives. And I don't want to go through the through through all those things because God has helped us through that. Um, but let's go to Job nineteen, and it's the one through five. It says, "How long will ye vex my soul and break me in pieces with words?" These ten times have ye reproached me. Ye are not ashamed that ye make yourselves strange to me. And be it indeed that I have erred. Mine error remaineth with myself. If indeed ye will magnify yourselves against me and plead against me my reproach. That's hard. That's a hard thing to hear. But you got to understand, these people were supposed to be his friends. And these were supposed to be people that were his neighbors and stuff that were trying to supposedly comfort him. And, you know, he spoke out. Uh, that He said, well, how he felt. That God, you know, that, that God had somehow punished him or something. But that's not a sin to feel that way. It's not a sin to have feelings and, and to I I express ourselves. But the problem is, is his friends weren't seeing it the right way. He was hurting. And a lot of times in our hurt and in our pain, you know, we, we say things. And sometimes, yes, we say things. Probably we shouldn't. But none, we're hurting nonetheless. But I, I don't think that I should feel guilty sometimes about telling my friends, you're not helping me. You know? And... And who are you to say that I shouldn't speak this way? You know, that you, you should be more understanding. I don't have to be understanding if people aren't being comforting. And you're supposed to be my friends and you're supposed to be my brethren. And family that's walked away from us because in times, our times of trouble. And even though, like there's been times in my life, even though I did nothing wrong, people scorned me. And people separated themselves from me. And a lot of it's because they see my past. But my past bears no nothing in my life now. There is nothing in, there, in my life now to, to suggest that I'm anywhere close to that person anymore. But it doesn't matter. And it's supposed to be, you know, your friends in life... You know, and people that are supposed to be supportive of you um, aren't there for you. And that's what Job was going through. Um, you know, it said that Job had just lost everything besides his wife, a few servants, which were bearers of all the bad news, and some who called themselves friends. Both his wife and his friends were no comfort. His wife told him to curse God and die. His friends accused him of doing something to have provoked God into punishing him. <laughs> Job already knows he is not perfect. But he also knows he had done right for God and lived for serving him. And being that example as well to his family and friends. Well, let's, let's kind of like, let's look at verse 3. It says, these ten times have ye reproached me. Ye are not ashamed that ye make yourselves strange to me? Let's go down to 13 and 15. It says, 
He hath put my brethren far from me, and my acquaintance are verily estranged to me. They that dwell in mine house and my maids count me for a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. And then 17 and 19 says, My breath is strange to my wife, though I entreated for the children's sake of mine own body. And 19 says, All my inward friends have abhorred me, and they whom I loved are turned against me. Because all of his friends, even his wife, you know, uh, people who we look up to, people we love will scorn us to shame as if their lives were so much better to say such things in our times of trouble. These people surprise us so much with their accusations, we no longer recognize them. And that's what what he's saying is it's like, who are you? You know, when you have friends and family that that were, say they love you and say they'll be there for you, if you ever need anything, just let me know. And then when the things happen in our lives, where are they? Who are you? Because some of these people say that people deserve to be forgiven. And, you know, everyone needs another chance. Or, or we got all these other people that say, well, you should have turned your life over to God. And, and then all of a sudden, when you turn your life to God, they don't know you. They don't care. Or your friends that say they'll be there for you and want to help you in your time of need. But then when, you, when it comes right down to it, the, all they have is horrible things to say. That's why you don't even recognize them. Anymore. Even your own, even his own wife told him to curse God and die. Even Job's own wife told him that. But because she was one with him, God spared her life too because she was one with him. She was part of him. So, But it was hard to believe that his own wife had turned against him. It was hard to believe that all of his neighbors and friends that supposedly came to comfort him, the people that he probably dined with and ate with, people that he trusted, people that that probably told him the same things my friends and my family told me. Everybody deserves forgiveness. Everybody deserves another chance, you know, and I'll be there when you need me and call me if you need me. And then when you do, they're not there. Or if they, they come around and, and just accuse you of doing all these things, when in reality, the only thing that's going on is that God's putting things in perspective to the spiritual world. Have you considered my servant Job? See, it wasn't about what Job had done wickedly. It was about what he was doing that was right. That God was trying to prove a point to the spiritual world, which was the devil at the time, that Job wasn't going to do anything against me. He wasn't trying to prove to friends, but that was all part of the plan. Was the devil was going to speak words into them that maybe they don't even realize that they're doing to discourage Job. I mean, the devil tried to turn his wife own wife against him, his own friends against him, his own family against him. And it, it didn't seem that the servants were, did him any good because all they did was bring him bad news. <laughs> so it didn't like he didn't have anywhere to turn but to God. Um, and like I said, people who we look up to, people we love will scorn us to shame as if their lives were so much better than ours. And they surprise us. We don't even recognize them anymore. And that's what he was saying here. It says, How long will ye vex my soul and break me in pieces with words? These ten times have ye reproached me. You are not ashamed that ye make yourselves strange to me. And, and, and it was like he even said it down here. And it says, my house, my maids count me for a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. It says, my, my breath is strange to my wife, though I entreated for the children's sake of my own body. In other words, he's saying, I did all of this for my children. Everything that I did was for them. But yet they still didn't seem to want to entrust the things that I trusted for God. 
I did everything that I lived for. The reason I had everything that I had was because God gave it to me. And so I lost it all. And he said, well, God's given, God's taken away. He realized that all that stuff was from God anyway. He didn't understand why he was going through what he was going through. And his friends and his wife, his family was not helping him at all. And that's, he was basically, he was not afraid to confront them and tell them what they were doing and how it made him feel. Now, in verse 25, Job said something. And this was still, you know, he was still uh, venting. He was still telling his friends that were saying things. He said, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter days upon the earth. And it said, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. He was still proclaiming redemption through God and not through the words of these people. No matter what, he wasn't going to give up on God, even though he felt like God had given up on him. He knew that in the end, God was going to be all that he had. And, and, and that's, some, that's saying something. And see, the thing is, is even though we've been through all of the stuff that we've been through in our lives and still are going through things, and even though you guys might see us asking for help and all this stuff, I want you to know that, I, I look, there are people that have helped us, people that I don't even know. I've friended them on Facebook and stuff like that. But why is it the people closest to you, the people that you love, the people that you actually expect to help you, not that I, I think that anybody should, okay? I'm not, you know, I'm not saying you have to help me. The first thing that I always ask for is prayer. So if you don't have anything good to say or encouraging to help lift my soul, then you need to just shut it. Because the best thing to do in people's lives is not to be discouragement to them. If you say that you're a friend, you say that you're family, if you say that you're their brethren, then be encouraging and lift them up in love. And... Just because they're going through hard times doesn't mean that, well, they just need to learn something. Or it's because he lives like this is why he's going through this. That's not always the case. And in most cases, it isn't. Our battle is not against the flesh. This, 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 this reality, in a Christian's life, our battle is always in the spiritual realm. And it's not always because of something we've done. But a lot of times it's because God wants us to trust him. And, and I'm telling you what, you're not doing yourselves any favor uh, by not being supportive. And I'm not saying everybody has to. I'm not telling you that. I'm not trying to make anybody feel guilty. I'm saying if you want to be helpful, don't be scornful. Be encouraging. Be loving. Be kind. And don't use God's name if you have something discouraging or, uh, or unhopeful to provide. It's better to not say anything than to open your mouth and be at a discouragement to a brother who's going through something. And I'm telling you, there's been days, and look, I might not cry tears on here or in front of you, but I am also still a man. I might have a past, but that past isn't who I am anymore. And it isn't what defines me, and it shouldn't define me to you. If you consider God to be who he says he is, if you believe in the word of God, you also believe that he changes a man, that, that he, he, he changes their lives and changes who they are. And even though they may be tempted, just don't forget. Don't forget the things that you've done in your life. And the fingers can be turned back at you. And it might be because of the, how discouraging you were that God will put you through something. Remember that too. If you're a Christian, you know uh, the things, the, the how, how you suffer for them, but you should never let a brother suffer alone. And the, the least you can do is always pray and, off, and and say that you're praying. And I love it. I, you know what? I love the fact there's been people that helped us in our time of need. And I'm not trying, and look, this is not, this message isn't for them because they know who they are, who's helped me. And some people have helped me more than once who need help themselves. And praise God, we've got, we know that's how it always, that's how it always happens, it seems. 
is that people that need help the most give the most help. And I'm telling you what, and, and you may say, well, it's because I don't give. Well, I do. You don't know my life. My private life is none of your business, but you can ask. But I would prefer you not ask about my personal lives. And, and it says a lot of times in the word that, that is, uh, you know, you can't keep your life private because people want to butt their noses where it doesn't belong. Now, if I ask for prayer, that's fine. But you know, my private life, if it does affect the church, is, is your business, okay? Now, as far as if, if it affects the church negatively in a negative light, but sometimes people see someone in the church asking for help as, as portraying a negative light, that's not the case. Because the problem is, and I'm going to be totally honest with you, is whenever I used to have a need years ago, and you, many of you might not know this, is I used to just take it. If I had a need for some money or, or a way somewhere, I took it. And people in my past should know that. You know, I used to steal. I used to steal all the time. And you know what? My heart convicts me so much now. There's been times, uh, like it just happened the other day, matter of fact, um, I had three loaves of bread. Now, this might seem tiny, but I had three loaves of bread. And I noticed on my, I looked at my receipt. I, I look at my receipt all the time. Um, but I looked at my receipt and only two loaves were on there. And she had come over and checked my thing before that. And I seemed to be having problems with the, the machine that day. But I noticed, and I could have walked right out the store that day. In the past, if it hadn't rung it up and it was already in my bag, well, of course, they didn't have self-checkouts those days or sometimes i've walked away forgetting about something under my cart i have i have driven down the road and turned around and come back and paid for things because that's who i am but that's not who i used to be and the, those are just some small tiny examples of what god has done in my life once upon a time i used to take advantage of people for what they had and it didn't matter to me that it would hurt them because a lot of times I'd just walk away and leave everything and leave it to them to pick up the pieces. I'm not that person anymore. Now I look to try to help others. And, and now I look to, to and give everything that I have, you know, but I also realize that it affects my life too. I can't just walk away from things. I mean, sure I could, but who am I hurting? the family that I've worked so hard to try to, to show that they need Jesus in their lives. When I, when I first came to this family, Jesus wasn't here. And I'm not saying our life was perfect. I knew that we needed God and I knew that we needed to go to church, but we still did things we shouldn't have done. But it led us to where we are today. And if you know us today, you know that everyone in our family is involved in the church in some way or another may not be out in the open to where people see us, but we are certainly involved, um, especially um, the children. And just because you may see something, you don't see everything. You don't see what we go through in this family. You don't see what we help provide. And believe it or not, I'm not boasting in that. I do what I do for the Lord, not for you. Though you may be affected and though things are good for you that we do for the church or for our missionaries, um, it's our business. We do it for God, not for you. Everything that we do should be for the glory of God. And the whole point, and, and, and look, God brought us together here as a family. And we've been through a lot together as a family. And I know some of you won't watch this all the way through, but this is a message, okay? And sometimes we sit through an hour message at church, and but we won't watch our friends or our brothers have a message to speak. But my message to you today, and you were probably waiting for the title of this message, says, where is your comfort? <laughs> That's my message, is where is your comfort? Is it in God or is it in man? We can become very disappointed when we look for our comfort from man. And though I'm not saying you won't be upset. 
because you will. When friends start just pointing the fingers, when friends have nothing encouraging to say, and this was Job's case. And every time he said something, they'd have something worse to say. It wasn't doing him. They had, he had just lost everything and they were pointing the fingers at him. Like he had done something. And that's what's happening in our case with, with the help that we've needed. And look, <coughs> I'm not <coughs> saying this message out of spite or anything, but I am saying it because I wanna, I'm telling you like Job told his friends. You know, I'm sick of you just pointing the fingers at me. I'm sick of you having something to say, but not helping us. You know, it's better that you keep your mouth shut and pray and ask the Lord to forgive you for even thinking about negative things. Because our battle is, is not in the flesh and the blood, but it's against spiritual, uh, spiritual things in the spiritual realm. And are you helping to provide the evil in the person's life or discouraging words in someone's life? Are you help, Are you allowing the devil, the spiritual realm, to give you words of discouragement to a brother when he needs help and encouragement and prayer and comforting words? It doesn't have to be by giving someone money. Comfort sometimes comes in, the, in words, you know, like I'm praying for you. You know, um, if I could, I'd help you. Just offer encouraging words, you know, and I understand that you're going through hard times, but remember that God is there for you. Just put your trust in him. If those are the words that need to come out of your mouth, then fine, but don't let it be discouraging words like it's something that I've done. And if that's the way you're thinking, then get it out of your head because I know that God loves me and I know that I'm not perfect and I know that I need to change and it's not something I need to hear from you. It's not. I, I know that I'm not perfect. Just like Job said. He said right there that he knew he wasn't. He says in verse 4, in chapter 19, it says, And be it indeed that I have erred. Mine error remaineth with myself. So in other words, he's telling you, so why are you to, I know that I'm not perfect, but that should remain with me. Okay? But right now I'm in pain. And it says, um, if indeed ye will magnify yourselves against me and plead against my reproach. So he was letting them know. And I'm going to close, close this right now. And just to let you know that, look, God loves you. And I forgive you if you, you know, one of the ones that, that's been a discouragement to me. But I want you to know that I do know that, that God is is whom I ultimately trust and know that he's going to get us through this. But I also want to let you know, don't be the person that the devil allows to discourage me. Don't be a part of that spiritual battle that I got to fight. Be the encouragement, be the part of God that God wants you to be as a brother and sister in Christ. You know, I can't, I, I can talk till I'm blue in the face to family and friends, but if they're not living for God, it's not going to do any good anyway. But don't be a stranger to me. Don't be that person. I'm like, who are you? You know, because there are a lot of you in church and a lot of people that I know and, and, and outside of the church and stuff. It's like, I, I love, I'm like, really? Did they just say that? You know, and sometimes I've looked up to people and they just let me down. I'm not going to point fingers at nobody. It's, you know, and some people aren't even around anymore. But it was just so surprising to see that they said they love God so much and trusted in God so much. And they're always in church and they're always doing what's seemingly right. And then for them to do the things that they've done. So don't be that person. You know, and I'm also being encouraging to people who go through things. And that's why I titled it, uh, Where is Your Comfort? Remember that your comfort should be in God and not in people. And that's where I'm going to leave it today. And I just pray that uh, this message has reached you guys. And uh, let me say a little prayer before I go. And I hope that this message has encouraged you. Maybe this message has convicted your heart. Maybe this message has made you mad, but maybe you should check yourself if it has made you mad. But know that I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not judging nobody. I've forgiven everyone. And I know that sometimes that's just the way it is in life. Um, but let me pray. 
Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for this wonderful day, this wonderful message that you've given me, the things that you've showed me, and the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that, that you helped me see that I can only get through your word, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I just thank you and I praise you for everything that you've given me. I do not want to seem ungrateful for all that I still have. And I know that my problems aren't as great as some other people's have. And I know that I could be suffering so much more, Lord. But to suffer is to suffer nonetheless. To be in need is a need nonetheless. And Lord, you know the times that we live in. And I just ask that you help us in our times of need, Lord. And learn to be understanding to other people. And that includes me. And Lord, I just thank you and I praise you for the words that you've given me today. In Jesus' name, amen.